Okay. Um, hi, everybody. I'm going to walk you through some basics of how to set up an Evernote account, uh, how to create your first note, how to share a folder, because um, if you do any kind of online work with a teacher or with uh, other teachers, if you're an educator and you're watching this, uh, you may need to be able to share information. And then lastly, we're going to look at the difference between the Evernote web and the Evernote app. So I'm going to create a, just a random account. <clears throat> This one is not for my school because mine's already set up with my school account. So, it's just a basic email. You can use any email uh, that you want and then um, create a simple password, one that you'll be able to remember. I always tell the kids if it's something that you'll forget in 10 minutes, don't use it. So, this is what your kids will see the first time they go to um, Evernote. If you're a student, this will be what you see uh, if you're on a Mac. On a PC, they're really similar, but the only difference is it'll say download for PC instead of download for Mac. Plug in my mouse so we can do this. Um, I already have Evernote uh, installed, but for just go through purposes, you'll click the download bar. Once this is complete, let me stop it so that it doesn't keep trying to download it. And um, once it's complete, you'll drag the little Evernote icon into the applications box and then you'll see it over here on the side. So I'm going to go back up here, type in evernote.com, just take the download off and it'll take you back to their website. So then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to log in. This will probably take me to my school one. Nope, it's taking me to the first one. So this is good. It took me right to the site I needed to be. It's been so long since I've done this. So this is your launch pad. This is how it'll look for everybody when you start. Um, <clears throat> over here on the side, you've got, move this so I can see it, this shortcuts bar. So if you have notes that you have to refer to constantly, um, if it's like a to-do list or a checklist, uh, you can put that there. I'll turn this down because I didn't realize how loud it was. Um, uh, teachers, if you have notes from uh, faculty meetings that you take specifically, you can put them in the shortcuts uh, and you just drag it, like you drag the note here over to the shortcuts. So we're going to create a notebook. Uh, you've got one here called My First Notebook. If you want to go in and change it, you can come in, there's a little drop down tab, and you can hit rename. And so I'm going to name this um, School Clubs. So I'm going to label it as if this is my after school folder so I can put notes from teachers in here. I can type my checklist, my to do list in here. Um, I'm going to delete this first note because I don't really need it. it it's got a kind of basic breakdown, so if you are new to Evernote or you haven't used it in a while, you may want to look at it before you delete it. So to create a note, it's really simple. You click this little button that says uh, plus new note. Um, the drop down here that my little cursor is pointing to, if you have multiple folders, it'll allow you to put them in multiple folders. So what I did with my students in our eighth grade science classes, I came over to notebooks. So go back over to the left hand column and you're going to click the little uh, drop down for notebooks and then click new notebook. So they had to create one um, with their name. I'm going to use cheese, my dog, because I already have one called Carter and Chris science and then the, the word science behind it so that they know that this is their science folder because um, they're going to share it with me in a second. If you have multiple classes, then you could name it um, like Carter English, Carter uh, History, Carter, um, Advanced, uh, AP Biology. So name it whatever you need to name it. Uh, most teachers will ask that you put your last name or your first name in it so that they know who it is because when they view it, it'll look much different. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add my first note. I want to put this one in my, my science notebook. But it won't let me because it's being difficult. So I'm going to title it um, CBA Review. So this will be my, my checklist of things I need to do for my CBA review. So I'm going to create a note card. I need to study with Kim. 
and then I need to do tutoring after school on Tuesday. So one of the bonuses of Evernote is uh, you can come in here, you can strike through text, you can add exponents, you can add subscripts, you can actually add links. So if there's a link to another website that you want to go to, so like this is our classroom website. And I want to use uh, the change for the I can come click this link and then I can add the link in to my site and it shows up takes it a second but it adds it in there for me uh, you can add images you can add PDFs you can attach any file any Word document um, Prezi links will work here uh, what else can you do? Your um, PowerPoint folders, um, Sketch, if you work in Sketch. So those are just some basics for it. Uh, you can add hashtags. So if I need this for uh, testing, I want to put this in for testing, and then um, CBAs. So those are my two hashtags. So then if you notice, uh, there's this little check mark that shows up and the little swirl that comes around it. Evernote has a built-in feature that it saves every five seconds uh, that new things are added. So if I don't change anything for 10 minutes, it's not going to update it. But if you come down here and type return a couple times, it'll show a little ghost check mark and then it saves it. Uh, so that makes it easy. Um, it lets you kind of, it saves the, oh my gosh, did I remember to save that kind of aspect. So... If I know I need to save this into my science folder uh, and I forgot to save it, um, you can click the notebooks and it'll kind of refresh everything and then come up to this drop down window and add things over. So this middle column tells you what you're working in. So I always tell students, make sure that your middle column is the notebook that you want to work in before you hit the new note button. Um, so from from that, and um, teachers, give me a sec, I'm going to come back and log in as my teacher and students so you know how this looks. Uh, as a teacher, my notes, it says I have 333 notes. Those are not all of my notes. Those are the students' notes as well. So I have, let's see, joined notebooks. These are all the notebooks that have been shared with me. So... Uh, like I can go into, where's my one that says Carter Science? I feel like I've lost my brain. So Christian Science, this is one of our students. Uh, these are the three notes that he took in class, and then this is his actual project that he shared with me through the PowerPoint. Um, this was an exit ticket that we did, so you can see it's easy to, to share it. Uh, the I can't move it from his notebook, so it's there, but I can adjust it and add notes to it. So let's go look at how you do that. So come back up here to view my notebooks. It'll take you back to your home. And then um, I want to share this notebook for Carter Science. So if you come over to your notebooks in the far right hand corner, this is for everybody, students and teachers, and you click the little drop down, it allows you to share this notebook. So I'm going to click share notebook. Um, if you create a public link, that means anybody can see it. Uh, that one's probably the one you don't want to pick unless it's an open share source, uh, like with a team, and you want everybody to just have access to it. So I'm going to do share with individuals. Um, if you're a student and you're sharing this with a teacher, you need to make sure that the drop down that says individuals who join can, you want to click it and say that they can view the notes um, and modify. I've ch or already shared this once, so it won't let me do that. So I'm going to come back, go to a different notebook that it'll let me do that. So epic. I'm going to do my drop down window. 
Modify the sharing. Share with individuals. Still no. Bear with me. I gotta find one that I haven't shared yet. Hold up. Okay, so back to my student notebook. Drop down window, share this notebook. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to enter the email address. So I'm going to put my actual teacher email address in. Share with an individual. And then the drop down window for teacher for students sharing with a teacher. Um, please make sure you check this one that says modify notes. This allows them to actually see your notes and make suggestions or grade it uh, kind of thing. And then you'll hit share. I'm going to hit cancel though because I don't want to share this with myself because it's a ghost notebook. So. With Evernote as a web-based, um, the big key things to remember are these are the notebooks on the far left-hand side that you can pull from. Uh, the hashtags are down here on the bottom. So the way that I've rolled out hashtags with my kids is you can search. Um, like I want to look for anything that I've talked about with moon phases. So I'm going to make sure that it's all. And then these are all of the notes where I mentioned the word moon phases in it. Um, or it talks about a, a phase. Um, so the conference that I did, TCEA. So these are my conference things that I did. Um, so the hashtags, when you put a tag in it, it'll allow the students, if you're a student, it'll allow you to search things quickly and easily. So if you're looking for something about World War II, you don't have to th thumb through an entire notebook of information. You can go in there and type World War II, and it'll pull up everything that you've talked about or written about in there. Uh, the app version of it looks eerily familiar because it's designed to look just like the web version. It's going to take a second because it's got to sync up. So this is how it will look on your iPad as well as uh, on your laptop if you're on a MacBook and you're doing it through the, um, the app launch, the launch app for it. So again, you've got all the notes that you've written. And so if you click on it, it'll show you all of the notes in this middle section. Because again, the title, the folder that you're working in is going to be that middle section. If you want specific notebooks... So these are like my student notebooks. So I want to look in one that actually has notes in it. So I'm going to pull Carter's notebook. Like this is my personal notebook where I talk and uh, prepare things for students to use. It has Skitch apps that I've used um, in here. It has, uh, if you can see, there's a, a smart folder in here. There's a pages folder, which is like a document in here. So it's not just limited to the web. Uh, these are PDFs here, so it's got a zip folder in here. So it, it does have quite a bit of storage um, and allows you to keep a, a, quite a bit of information there for it. So, yeah, that's Evernote. It's pretty simple. It is portable. It can go anywhere you go. Uh, the plus side of using it versus using a Google Drive uh, is that most of the Google Drives for the LISD students are set up to their LISD account, so if they leave the district, um, they can't access their information. Uh, and Google Drive can be kind of cumbersome on a mobile device where Evernote was written with that platform in mind. So I hope this helps. Um, I'm going to upload another one here in a minute. You can see it's importing all of the notebooks, so it's taken away pretty quick. Uh, I will upload how to use Sketch and what 
uh, penultimate looks like for those that need it. So if you need any help, please give me uh, a type, I guess a, an email, a Carter C at LASD.net, or you can check us out on Twitter at Room 161 Chaos. So thanks for watching.